This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a simple tool that provides you a safe and enjoyable online experience. It can unlock your favorite apps and websites no matter where you are, like in an office or school setting, or even visiting areas where certain services are blocked. That's because ExpressVPN has over 3,000 servers in 160 locations spanning across 94 countries. Accessing region-locked content from services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, and HBO Max, amongst many others, is simple and fast. ExpressVPN also shields all your internet traffic with strong encryption and has a strict no activity or connection logs policy. You're protected on any network, including public Wi-Fi's in cafes, airports, and hotels. ExpressVPN is available on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, and even routers, so your gaming consoles or smart TVs can also benefit from it. Use the link expressvpn.com forward slash JaganX to find out more and to receive a limited time offer of receiving an extra three months when you sign up for the 12 month plan. Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is my initial thoughts video for Arya. This is gonna be a worth it initial thoughts video because she's very powerful to say the least. Uh, we had a preview of her uh, a couple weeks ago actually during the kind of like hype montage trailer. And during that time, you know, like, I mean, she's got, she's got a lot of, uh, uh, nice, uh, how, do you, how do you say it? How do you put it lightly? In case for my younger viewers, uh, she's got a lot of goods, right? Um, like thighs, the the upper areas, and all that stuff. If that floats your boat, and she's an elf, right? So I'm not one of those like fantasy nerds, but I mean, uh, elf waifu. I actually un I understand the perspective. Uh, <laughs> regardless, we saw like the S3 animation, and during that preview, it was like more of like the sketch type and i like that they showcase it regardless of how close they were to finishing off the hero um you know keeps us on the toes keeps us guessing keeps us discussing uh and the s3 animation at that time because it looks kind of like colossal um she summons like this big monster thing uh lore nerds will probably tell me about what that monster is exactly um again i don't really read the story so i, I can't really follow it i can just you know enjoy the animations but we thought that, you know, potentially it could be the new episode's boss. So like a belly in, strays and stuff like that. Uh, but it turns out she's most likely not. And uh, probably has nothing to do with that. But the skill animation looks still really good. And her kit looks actually bonkers. So in context, we just had the Guilty Gear collab. Guilty Gear Strive. Sorry, I should make that very clear. Guilty Gear Strive collab with Jacko being the... Kind of like the new hero and jacko even though she's limited she at the at the moment she's still not functioning well and i'm still i'm like playing world arena and stuff like that and people accidentally or maybe they chose to draft her she doesn't function if she can't get the stun it's just it doesn't work for the whole team um in other words though uh jacko is a limited hero that it seems to out be outperformed by aria who is not a limited hero so this is sort of good it's good in the sense that like if we could take any you know learnings from the guilty gear strive collab it's that like not all collabs are going to be op all right so that's a good thing uh it's just you know for collectors we'll still pull um maybe they get buffed in the future but uh, at the same time we can really see uh epic 7 pushing that agenda uh, they were talking about the um how they're gonna balance the you know, they're gonna try to make ml5s not super powerful they're gonna try to amp up the power level of the rgb and hopefully that will balance out some of the issues that they were dealing with instead of like compensating everybody with like the ml pity systems the uh you know like the multiple mystic returns and stuff like that so people don't miss out on the ml5s and don't let me don't get me wrong, I think ML5 still are super high performance um, in World Arena right now, no matter what they're adjusting the Frenzy to be. But we can see this trend where like... Um, the RGB are definitely seeing more use, right? So Rimuru, uh, Rimuru being one, Hua Yang, um, I, I predict that Arya is going to be just as like... I mean, maybe not on the same level, but she's going to be still really good. Um, stuff that would counter her is pretty obvious, but I'm not going to talk about that because on paper she just looks so much better than like someone like Jacko, and uh, and we're seeing this right. So we're seeing what they're setting out. So is Arya planned? 
in terms of like is she is her design here in line with their vision or is she a bit over tuned so i'm gonna leave that for you guys to decide um i'm pretty sure that this the most common thought on her is honestly she's pretty pretty bonk bonkers like pretty nutty in terms of her skill set so let's get right into it All right so with that long intro let's finally get into aria so aria like i said again um uh lovely waifu and we've got the uh, because of the episode we have we have like a more asian theme um so i mean the the clothing and stuff like that is very like chinese inspired um like what ancient chinese inspired so i mean that's pretty cool good stuff uh we got a bit of the uh draft uh illustrations and like i said i think that they could include more i know that they have more but this looks like almost already completed art anyway but i really like like the the process the progress like really the only thing that's really draft like concept art like in this is like the really ugly arrows <laughs> it seems like someone did that at after the fact you know like they, they, they placed this on a photoshop thing is so, okay we're gonna make a video and uh, here here here's some screenshots like with like alpha or transparency they kind of plop this onto this like a gray gray backing and then they like they draw like random arrows to point it like i just don't feel like the like the scroll the opening of the scroll the little flower beside her with the arrows and stuff like i feel like that's like an afterthought not really like how you would present the concept art to like an art director or something like that um, again i come from that art background and I, I, I know how it's presented it's not like this but it, I mean, it's still nice to have them included. Uh, I, I want them to keep including it, but I would like some of that more more raw stuff. So like, you know, you put all that work into it. We like to see the process. I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't mind it. Plus this on their preview videos are usually only one frame or not one frame, but one slide. One to maximum two slides if they have a lot to show, but it's just literally one slide still image that has like a zoom in, zoom out sort of transition. And that's pretty much it. So it's like, doesn't really hurt to show us some of the progress, uh, unless you want to put that into the uh, art book. Yeah, that's, I'm talking to Epic Seven, of course, like Small Gate. So Arya is a mage and Taurus Ice. So really, if you're familiar with Tauruses, uh, Dizzy used to be the one I would compare to, but she's not really used anymore. But uh, Sage Ball and Cezanne, I guess, would be one. Solitaria. Uh, these are mages with pretty good stats, like bulky stats. So you can see there the uh, defense is at six, 673 so that's one thing that's really notable imprint concentration is 18 percent defense self imprint the speed is 115 so it's very very solid um very shiftable in terms of like you can have them pretty fast if you have the speed gear or you have them decently fast that they're super annoying so like a uh, solitaria generally people unless you're just putting the highest speed gear on her generally people have her about like the 170 uh, 270 to 280 speed and she can function pretty well now Aria, when we're talking about her kit, it's going to be beneficial. As you can see on the stats screen there, we have 35% crit chance. This is due to her passive, so that she actually has an additional 10% on top of that. So realistically, you have 45% critical hit chance, which is pretty insane. Now arguably you would say that, okay, I think on her kit, the wasted stats are honestly the ER and maybe the effectiveness. But hey, who knows? I think the thing is with like Solitaria, Sage Ball, and Sazan, even though they can function without critical hit chance like a lot of people build them high er sometimes they go the high effectiveness route and i actually think that the high er route based on the current meta of world arena might not be a bad thing for those who are going to build her kind of like a bruiser instead of like a speedy dps okay so just note those stats so 115 speed very flexible uh 5299 health is not terrible the attack is slightly low for a DPS, but I think her function is far beyond just a pure DPS, while she still has a lot of DPS tools. Um, this is what I think is like a very, very solid start. The imprint release is also very good as well at 12.9% uh, 12, 12 defense uh, increase for two slots front and back. This could be very, very good. I could see this actually being used the imprint release and the imprint concentration just based on how she functions as a hero overall. I just feel like she could bring a lot to the table, whether self-buffing for the imprint concentration, because scaling her defense is going to be nutty anyway, 
or helping support the backline, especially in like world arena drafting. Um, regardless, I think that she's one of those heroes that you'll probably be toggling the imprint release if you use her, if you draft her, the imprint release and the concentration before the battle, she'll be one of them. Uh, so skill two is uh, a passive. Alright, it's a passive, so this can be sealed by Archdemon's Shadow, but that is a very, very, I mean, there's only one sealing hero at the moment, but just to keep that in mind, it is sealable. So when you do seal this passive, it will definitely be 20% uh, crit, your crit chance here will be gone, right? So something to keep in mind, um, but uh, wait, uh, where was the... Yeah, it is a passive. Just double checking. Just double checking. It is a passive. I wanted to see the icon. But 100%, yes, it's a passive. It functioned like a passive. I shouldn't have doubted myself. Uh, as the caster's health decreases, critical hit damage increases up to a maximum of 50%. So up to a maximum of 50% critical hit damage. That sounds pretty darn good. Now, it depends on where the thresholds cut off. Um, and, you know, when when what is the percent of the HP before you hit the 50%? But let's just say on an average you're halved. So let's say you have, uh, and actually the starting crit damage too. Like, does it does it only start crit damage count like after like your HP has decreased? I mean, based on this reading, yes. So you assume zero crit damage improvement um, with your full HP, and then when you start getting hit, it starts going up. But I'm just curious curious about the scaling. But let's say let's say you get about 25% usable critical hit damage. That's generally pretty darn good already, right? So we're talking about like an almost damage improvement of 25%. So that's that's pretty strong, um, depending on their defense and whatnot. Uh, but but let's just say 25%. Um, in my opinion, that's already really good. So in this passive itself, you have two things that help her stats. So you can lower her stat requirements in order to chase something like speed or defense or something like that in order to help her function fully uh, with the potential of her full kit. Um, as you can see, there's the skill enhances plus up to plus seven. You have an additional 10% critical hit chance. And that 10% gives her another, it gives her a total of 30% on the passive itself. Now again, keep in mind that on these uh, these previews, it shows the, the hero like out of the box. This is not presuming the awakening, or sorry, this is presuming max awakening. So it's a bit confusing sometimes because they don't show like six star right on the top it shows five star without awakening right but it's presuming uh fully awakened no imprint no imprint concentration um and it's assuming any passive stat that's added to it right so like we saw with hua yang why she had such high base attack on this screen um it was because of her passive but it wasn't adding the additional attack she gets from the mola or the skill enhancement um but so that's just something to keep in mind so it is it, it is will be 45% critical hit chance after you fully awaken her, um, after you fully molar her, and then you start pu putting the gear, uh, you start caring about the gear's critical hit, um, yeah, critical hit chance. Uh, and then it has not only that, not only more damage and free crit rate, you have uh, after using a skill when focus is full, so after using any of the skills, so it works like uh, Milum, works like Bologna, so green Bologna, but green Bologna is kind of like out, for so long, a lot of people forget how she kind of functions, maybe, um, especially newer players, but Milum. Uh, so after using either the S3 or the S1, whichever one will gain her the max focus, she'll be able to unleash Dark Shadow Phantom. So Dark Shadow Phantom says, attacks all enemies, dispelling two buffs. So this is not skill duration removal, by the way. This is full on dispel, two buff, and a decreased combat range by 30%. Damage dealt increases proportion to Cassidy's defense. So, like, are we, like, we're most likely looking at, like, a support defense bruiser, like, scaling bruiser. So, uh, like, we know that could be very, very effective in the current meta. And, like, someone like a Hua Yang is not going to take her out really easily, um, unless, unless you have, like, very, very, like, low HP. But just keep in mind that we do have announcement that the World Arena, at least for this, this season coming, uh, which is at least called Resolution Season, uh, is they're gonna keep the 30% damage mitigation on when when you have elemental advantage. So for example, like someone drafts Hua Yang, you draft her, and even though you have like, I don't know, let's say 10,000 10, HP max, 10,000 HP, 
and then Hua Yang decides to do an attack buff S3 on you, just keep in mind that your Aria, even though she'll ignore your defense, your Aria is going to have a 30% damage reduction so if you have some kind of aureus or something i don't think a hua yang is going to kill you i'm pretty sure i have to run a damage calculator but we're just putting that like out there that she's going to be very robust against a fire pick all right um i won't do my commentary on what i think about the world arena frenzy and the changes and stuff like that um that will probably be in my rbtl video but uh anyways I'm making this first, actually, this video before the RBTL video, which is something new. <laughs> I woke up at like 3 a.m. and watched this video. I'm like, oh man, she's pretty hype. So I, I came up, got up to make the video. Anyways, so yeah, Dark Shadow Phantom, very, very strong. Uh, we have to see the damage mods on the Dark Shadow Phantom. It's a defense scaling one, so I don't expect it to be very, very powerful. And it's also an extra attack. So to my knowledge, most of the extra attack skills in this game at the moment are generally pretty low in terms of the return so like vivian's extra attack if you kill with the we call it the flush so like vivian's extra attack milim's extra attack ssp's like extra attack um usually like they're they're not super high damage mods so i'm not gonna expect a lot from here except the dispel and the decreased combat readiness that's aoe as well and on top of it it skills on defense that which you're gonna pump anyway so it's it's already very very good so even if you have like let's say a 0.5 attack mod with maybe a 0.5 defense scaling mod or maybe 0.7 this is still pretty good now i'm doing this early so i don't have the data mine i will post the data mine info once i get it into the video description below so you know if you want the data mods you can keep that in mind and you can do your comparison on like you know how she how she fit uh, or how she compared to Adilabet, who is a defense scaling bruiser, uh, Align Harsermia, all that stuff. So, but but in my opinion, I'm not gonna expect high damage from this. It's gonna be just nice to have. But really, it's talking. We're talking about the D spell. Um, that's pretty nuts. The combat readiness decrease is pretty nutty too. Thirty percent is like is insane for an AOE. Uh, and then we have Ash three, the Umbral Hour. So using the power of shadows, increase the defense of the caster and adopts a counter attack stance for two turns. So you have self defense buff, and you have a counter, uh, counter buff. So counter buff, if I remember correctly, it is a fifty percent counter, um, fifty percent counter rate. But in my opinion, it acts, it functions way higher than a fifty percent. I'm talking about my experience with like fighting against Senya or my Senya fighting someone. It's just like once that counter attack uh buff is up it feels like she does it a lot um but that being said you could you could still pair it with a counter set i suppose but i do feel that i feel that speed set maybe immunity maybe without maybe no immunity i don't know but i think speed set i would say immunity speed set immunity i would say would be my go-to on her um and i and probably build her fast because I feel like the way she functions is that you want to get fat, you want to be fast, and you want to get that counter attack stance up. Um, so, anyways, yeah. Sorry, let me continue. So you get the counter buff for two turns, right? So def uh, defense increase and counter counter stance two turns, and then you grant stealth and a barrier to all allies except the caster for two turns, and then barrier strength increase proportion to the caster's defense. Now, the barrier strength uh, proportion to caster's defense is going to be great, right? Um, it's gonna protect your teammates and you have everyone still now I didn't take a screenshot of the fight itself. I just didn't think that it was necessary Maybe um, you can watch the video uh, For this one. I didn't feel it was necessary But you could just imagine all your heroes going into stealth and they all have a thick barrier So this forces a couple things right it forces that like if you if you're gonna draft Arya or someone's drafting Arya against you or you see Arya, it's going to be like, okay, I'm gonna assume that she's gonna be pretty quick, so I gotta take her out. But if she's really high defense, you need someone who can defense pen and kill her ASAP before she casts this. Because like once this is up, everyone else is protected. Even if she dies on the next hit, once they're in stealth and barrier, um, the only way you're gonna be able to choose your target is that she's dead, right? And the fact that is that if they have stealth and a barrier, this is going to be very hard to knock them out with an AOE attack. So what you're what you're really looking at is a hero that will funnel or force you to funnel all your damage into her, and then she'll most likely counter you with that counter buff and pretty tanky because you have increased defense. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, 
and, and then uh, you don't want her to counter too much because she, she'll raise her uh her, fo her focus and then you're, you're gonna get you know dispelled and pushed back with her passive so if you look at this screen there um uh, skill enhance plus one which is only one skill enhancement here will make this four turns now four turns realistically in any fight you're most likely not going to get this going off twice before your team dies right um or at least before she's dead um so this skill, skill cooldown to me it doesn't matter um if she is like a high skill cooldown or low skill cooldown um but it's it's four turns so it's pretty standard it's not too long so it's fine uh, the acquire focus is something that you need to know and you need to see. So it requires three once she gets that turn, right? So once she goes to the S3, it gets three focus. So three focus means that it requires two more S1s in order for her to unleash the uh, dark phantom shadow, right? So uh, focus both is uh, is based off of five, uh, five total focus, and then once it hits five, it unleashes. So uh, we have the S1. As you can see, the acquires focus is one. Uh, soul acquired is also one. Attacks two enemies with shadow. So functions like Champion Zerato, uh, uh, RB. So it can actually hit someone like Spectenny. It can do the full damage uh, against someone who is under stealth. If you hit the target, that is. Uh, so it, it does not mitigate. So for those who don't know, stealth is a mitigation of AOE damage by 50%. Right? So 50% damage mitigation is huge. Um, and that's why the barrier with the full team stealth is pretty broken here. And again, like I said, it forces you to have to confront Arya, which will make her just wreck you. Uh, unless you can take her out in terms of like you can stun her. Um, you can, I guess silence wouldn't matter. Maybe stun or sleep or something like that. Um, so yeah, attack three enemies and a 40% chance to decrease hit chance for one turn. Uh, oops, my text is cut off on the screen there, but whatever. It's well, for one turn, and then damage dealt increases proportionally to the caster's defense. So again, defense scaling bruiser, we're seeing this a lot. So the high attack on her, I guess it really doesn't matter, but even though she's a defense scaling bruiser, you're gonna have a, like a split. Um, so probably don't need to chase attack at all, to be honest, because I think she functions more like a support DPS than a pure DPS, so having high attack on her probably is going to be a diminishing return. With the skill enhance up to plus 5, it's going to be a 50% chance to decrease the hit chance for one turn. I personally think that uh, you know once we get the mods, we'll be able to determine. One thing that I won't be for certain without the damage mods is that it's just going to be a plus 15 hero. Um, that is something that I will be kind of thinking about. I definitely think that the S2 and probably the S1, I don't even know if I want to do the S3. I'm going to tell you guys a secret. So I think my Bellion, if I remember correctly, my Bellion's S3 is not maxed. Uh, nor is my ML Selene's S3. So in terms of like, I think both of them share the same thing as Aria, which is like a one skill enhancement with four one turn cooldown. And there's no extra like damage or whatever. Uh, maybe, maybe Bellion I did? I don't remember. I don't remember. But regardless, um, I didn't get the skill reduction. I believe like the cooldown reduction I didn't get it because I just didn't feel that in like the situation that would use Bellion or ML Selene I would never need that extra turn cooldown so like for Arya I myself I'm gonna take my own advice here um, unless she just turns out to be like super fast and annoying that you can really turn cycle this multiple times uh, I am probably gonna skip the skill enhancement all right that's just my that's just my advice at the moment if you're gonna invest in her early and you can't max her right away don't invest in the s3 until you realize there are fights that okay never mind I need that extra turn I I don't predict that to be the case um, because like I said how she functions if she's getting funneled she's going to die right she's going to die um, it's gonna be really hard for the opponents to take out the rest of your team who are under stealth and barrier um, and if you have an Aureus that's or a Piera, which it, was the showcase in their video, they have a Piera supporting, so it's going to be like even harder to kill off everyone um, because of uh, uh, Piera's um, damage sharing effect. It was just thirty percent uh, with her. What's it called? Escort. I have to remember that 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 skill is called Escort because uh, I've always disliked the name. Uh, <laughs> uh, Twenty Soul Soulburn is granted an extra turn. If you have her as a book holder, 
uh, which is going to might be a pro popular play um, for cleavers. If you have it as a book holder, the granting extra turn is is pretty nuts, right? So like you can go S three and you be protected most likely, but you can also soul burn first. You know what I mean? So you can you can soul burn and then uh, and then go into S three. So you have a damage going to S three, and then you only have one counter needed in order to pop off with the uh, Dark Phantom Shadow. So uh, being a mage is pretty nuts for this as well, with her kit being just really disgusting. And you know, uh, Scroll of Shadows, and also I cut this off on the screen. Now my my uh, my uh, <laughs> OCD is kicking in. Um, scroll of Shadows, uh, a scroll. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm not gonna read description. So, ma assuming max limit broken, the ca if the caster attacks when it's not their turn, uh, damage dealt increases by 16%. Then we're talking about uh, something like an Exorcist Tonfa. Um, what was that called? Symbol of Unity. Uh, and so, after attacking, has a 50% chance to inflict a random debuff to the tar on the target for one turn. And that is a defense break. So keep that in mind: defense break, decreased speed, silence, and also unbuffable. Um, I actually think, to be honest, uh, out of all these RGB heroes, generally I would never like recommend the RGB heroes artifact with the RGB hero. So like Hua Yang and and you know all this all the likes uh, with Zahawk and stuff like that. I I I don't I don't use it on Zahawk, uh, but I feel like for her, I think this could work. So in my opinion, you could probably go with something like. Uh, a Toggle's Ancient Book. I think Toggle's Ancient Book is going to be still very good uh, on her. This artifact, I think, is going to be pretty solid on her too. Honestly, this is like made for her. No other mage would benefit from this as much as her, I believe, at the moment. And you could probably think about Abyssal Crown. Uh, in the video, if you watch it, you actually see in. it looks like it's the same fight, but it's not. There's two fights going on when they showcase the S2 and and the S3. Two different fights, and she has two different artifacts. When they showcase the S2 animation on the video, they showcase the School of Shadows. When they showcase the S, well, actually S1, I suppose, um, on the on the or may, I don't know, they showcase it on the S3 and the S1. They use the Fairy Tale of a Nightmare. Now, I don't think Fairy Tale of a Nightmare will be that good on her. Um, really what you're getting is the flat damage, but because she has such high crit rate and self crit like critical hit damage buff I think that uh, you may as well go with something like school of shadows So outputs the damage of 16% greater than let's say fairy tale for a nightmare for getting a 60% strip and then getting like a flat a, a flat damage of like 1500 I think you could do more damage most likely with school of shadows and have the benefit of the actual actual debuffs now just keep in mind that these debuffs are actually pretty darn good, right? So you got the defense break, the silence is really good, unbuffable is very strong, decrease speed is also very good, especially if you compare her with the S2 that she has, which is 30% pushback. So overall, I think that this banner um, is a lot, lot better than something like Jacko's banner, uh, which is unfortunate. Now I have to compare it just because Jacko is the limited and it's like she's, I mean, I pulled quite a bit of bookmarks on it, but I feel that she's more worth the time and the resources uh pending that there's no other limiteds coming around the corner um i don't want to lead you guys astray but i would say that you know if i had the resources i would ham on this one um the artifact is is going to be very very solid in my opinion for her um outside of you planning okay i'm going to use her as a book holder uh that would be the only case that i wouldn't pull for this one um but if you plan to use this artifact on her definitely try to max it uh so it's going to be a really good banner um, get the hero, multiple copies of the hero if possible, and then the artifact is going to be very, very good. Now, in summary, like I said, I did mention what sets I think that she would be best with, and I honestly think that the speed set with the uh, immunity set is going to be my go-to here. I, there might be benefits to counter, I wouldn't say uh, lifesteal. Um, without the mod, I wouldn't say lifesteal, I wouldn't trust that to be enough to heal her. Um, but potentially, for if, if you're going to go bruiser play, I think a lifesteal set is going to be more beneficial than a counter set on her. Uh, let's see here, injury set is definitely out of the question, I think. Um, unless you're, uh, unless you're trying to meme. Revenge set, probably out of the question. So yeah, I would say maybe lifesteal set maximally. Lifesteal set for Banshee main players. 
and uh, speed set. Other than uh, other than that, the speed set. When we're talking about speed set, I think you want to get her like buff up as fast as possible. So with her base speed, it's not too hard to get something like 260, 270 speed with like damage stats. So like, again, you have you have the critical hit damage that will be kind of free over time. So maybe don't chase super high critical hit damage. Maybe 250 max. Um, and the crit rate is also really achievable already but that would be kind of cancelled out with the immunity set that you put on her but yeah speed set with high scaling defense uh, or, or high defense some some hp splashed in there probably don't focus on the attack too much high crit rate crit damage uh, you know what maybe you still need some attack i think um yeah something like that so anyways that's my thoughts for aria i think she's she looks very very strong uh i i am uh I, i'm definitely going to pull for her um, definitely not a skippable one to me uh but uh, yeah so let me know what you guys think about her in the comments down below uh how she'll function what are your plans are maybe for artifacts and stuff like that let me know what your thoughts are i'm gonna end this for the video recording if you guys have discord check out the discord server follow me on twitter subscribe to youtube if you haven't as always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time